future, talk radio will actually educate, inspire, and make you think. The future is now. Topics and music that affect your life from Universal Broadcasting Network. Tune in at UBNRadio.com. Hello everyone, Dr. Judy here of Dr. Judy WTF with the Freud. Thank you for joining in and we are going to be continuing the theme of last week, Satanic Ritual Abuse Case Study. Raquel has volunteered to share her horrific story of Satanic Ritual Abuse and we have been mind mapping the process. So hopefully some of you have seen last week's episode so you can be up to date with what's happening this week and she'll be calling in in a few minutes uh, before she does so I want to give you some information about the mind map something that I created many years ago for the purpose of healing global disconnect and then I, 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 I micro modeled it down to healing human disconnect And this is a process of healing from wounds of childhood through dismantling them to recoding into health. So it's a from through to model, past, present, future, encode, decode, recode. We're going to limit the amount of callers because we have so much to cover. We're going to be mind mapping panels four, five, six, chaos, defenses, and Raquel's breakdowns as a result of this level of torture that she experienced. And I also want to make a couple of announcements. I am going to be conducting a mind map seminar. I'm going to be doing it at the Sherman Oaks office in California. And this is going to be taking place September 14th, 15th, and 16th. I'm very excited. I have some people who've already pre-registered. You get $300 off if you pre-register for the Mind Maps uh, seminar. And it will be held in beautiful Sherman Oaks at the Psychological Healing Center. And we will also have the team available for people who want to do some individual work to do that. And it comes with the Mind Map video series and the book. So that's a pretty good deal for people who can't afford to see me individually and or who just want to be in a group setting and do it in a three-day intensive seminar process. So with that said, for those of you who do not know, I do have a mind map video series available. We have a beautiful team of people at the Psychological Healing Center. And do call in, do ask for your 15-minute free consultation, and we will match you with a therapist that will fit your budget and psychological needs. And so when Raquel calls in, you'll let me know. And uh, in the meantime, a little bit about satanic ritualistic abuse it sort of follows in an exaggerated form the hostage situation of the family so as i've said before childhood is a hostage situation because you are not able to to leave as an infant and you are subject to the treatment of your parents. And if they treat you with kindness and love and regard, you're in good shape. And if it doesn't go so well, it's a setup for, for really bad things to happen. Hi, Raquel. You are on air with, with me, Dr. Judy. How are you doing? Hello, Dr. Judy. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. All right. Uh, I'm doing good. Okay, and thank you so much for volunteering to be on air and talk about this subject, something that is very, very, it's, it's deep, it's painful, it's, uh, it's vulnerable, and of course people are very curious about this subject, as I've been told. 
and uh, you have been doing the mind map video series, I know. You've been tracking your wounds of childhood and how they have reacted within you and how they have embedded in you. And let's just, if, if you don't mind, let's do a quick review of panels one, two, three, wounds, reactions, and encodings. So if you can okay, speak. Okay, do you yes. remember? Because I, okay, good. <laughs> okay. okay, so uh, we, we know that um, your, your parents, uh, particularly your mother, right? So there are five different types of mm -hmm. abuse. There's physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional verbal abuse, and then there is neglect and smothering. And so tell me your panel one wounds, what came from your father, what came from your mother. Remember concepts like acts of omission, which is what wasn't done for you, and acts of commission, what was done for you, to you. And so break that down so that the audience can understand what the Freud we're talking about here. Okay. Um, you look beautiful, by the way. Oh, You're thank you beautiful. so much. That's so sweet. Appreciate yeah. it. Okay, my mother, we went through every form of abuse, plus ritual abuse. Okay. Um, she was a she was a rager. Mm -hmm. We did not get love, especially my sister. Um, we were abused severely. I have physical damage on my body because of it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm kind of struggling here. If you could help me, um, my father was never around, but from him, I realized I have abandonment issues because my little mind said, where are you? And why didn't you come and take us away? And that's act of omission, right? That's act of omission, what your right. father didn't do yeah. for you. And a father is a young woman's self-esteem in the apartment, in the department of who she is in a relationship. And if you're not cherished by him, and even worse, if you're rejected by him, that's really a setup for choosing men that may do same to you. And that's what I call the WTF, the what the Freud. Uh, Freud calls it the, the repetition principle. And that's why we tend to choose bad people, sick people into our lives because we're on a spin cycle. So yes, uh, yes, your father was active omission. He did not rescue you. And a parent is supposed to protect their child. So obviously you were not protected. Right. And how did he get away with um, being, what, what do you think it was about him that was so, made him so weak? Excuse me. You know, I, I'm, since doing your work, mm -hmm. I want to say that when you said the wound left in the light, it's true. So much light has come in and with my, I'm struggling, dear. Please That's help okay. Me, I'm going to help you a lot. And, you know, again, <laughs> okay. I, I want the audience to know that when you expose the, 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 the wounds to the light, first of all, it's, it's painful and it's also healing. And I think you were referring to a quote by Rumi, the philosopher Rumi, the light, the wound is where the light enters you. And so, Yes, and I heard you say that. It's true. And you've been wounded, and you've also let in a lot of light. And it is amazing to me that you did not curl up into a little ball, defend yourself, and not want to be seen or heard by any other human being on the planet. So we're going to discuss that in panel five, which is defense mechanisms. And as you've been sharing with me, one of your main defense mechanisms, which we'll delve into during this show, is that you split and you dissociate, correct? I do. I can, I can tune out anytime I want to. And I mm -hmm. remembered at 14, 15 years old, I could zone out. And people could snap their fingers in front of my face and they go, oh, Rocky's left us again. I could hear everything, but I didn't have to be there. And I only came back when I wanted to. And I felt nothing, but I could observe from outside or inside. It just depended what was going on. Okay, and that's that dis 
derealization, depersonalization. That's as a result of this dissociative disorders. This is a result of the mm -hmm. abuse. And the best place to be when you're being abused is not there, OK? to not be there right. emotionally. So good job. You did an excellent job of protecting yourself. Oh. Yeah, you did. Thank you. Yeah, yes. You didn't know that. You did. That's what you needed the to do. i I've never told anybody this, like, really honestly. Okay, so... I remembered it. Okay, so yeah. just realize that as we're talking about this delicate subject that relates personally right. to you... You may feel pain and you may feel exposed, and so you may be triggered and you may go bye bye. Okay, so as we're right. on air, you might find yourself checking out, and that's to be expected. So I want you to know that. Okay, because that's kind of what's happening. I actually peed myself before the show, and I realized I was programmed like that. Anytime I hear water, I will pee. Um, if I'm afraid, I will pee myself. And I'm being very vulnerable here and you honest. You sure are. I don't and, know exactly. And, and guess yeah. what? Guess what? Peeing well, in the pants, well. peeing in your bed past a certain age is a telltale sign of sexual abuse, which you alluded to oh. last time. Okay? So if you're still wetting yeah. the bed at your age... Remember in the book, in the video, in my, my, my work, I talk about how symptoms are hieroglyphics or clues and cues that right. point to the cause. So you and I are basically right. playing psychological detective, okay? And we want to yep. know who done it, what happened, how did you process it or not process it, right. and now we're going to process it. And so panels yeah. one... I'm sorry, what was the question? Oh, I was going to say yes. Um, I don't pee the bed, and I can control myself when I go out in public. Okay. It's just when I'm at home that I will pee all over myself before I make it to the toilet. And it doesn't matter how much I hold it. It's when I'm ready to speak to make videos or, like, talking to you. It's when I'm confronting truth and I'm going to speak about it. Okay, so... I do see all over myself, and I can't stop it. Okay, so it is what it is. And symptoms cannot mm -hmm. be treated as such unless we manage them. And I'm not a big fan of right. managing symptoms because I'm a big fan of going to the cause of these symptoms. So you've right. shared with me right. the sexual abuse. You've shared with me the uh, the level of emotional penetration. And so... Your peeing in your pants is a symptom of, of, of the abuse that you're talking about. Okay, so we're, we're now, Thank you. we're audience, we're beginning to connect the dots. We're beginning to connect the dots from cause to the chaos of today. So we're on panel four right now, which is chaos. And let me know when it's up there. Thank you so much. My tech support's great. They're always on it. And so panel four is really a metaphor for many things. If you look at it, and for those of you who are listening and not viewing, please go to my website, psychologicalhealingcenter.com or drjudywtf.com, and you can go to the mind map. And you can actually even enter your email address and receive a beautiful copy of the mind map. And if you see panel number four, you will see the DNA strand of panel three unraveled. And this is a metaphor for chaos on many, many levels. Chaos in the sense that the core sense of self, which should have been formed by stable parenting, stable um, stable environment was not formed in your case and it's fallen apart mm -hmm. if, if you look at panel right. number right it, it was never formed you didn't have right. a f father mm -hmm. you didn't have a mother you didn't have structure I call them the pillars the family pillars if you look at panel three right. the, the panel three is the DNA strand metaphorically it stands for the mother and the father union and the ladder that was created so that the children can grow safely up the ladder and self-actualize and climb higher and higher in function 
and development. In your case, there was no ladder. Okay. And it's also, no. also a metaphor for your core self. So in your case, your core self, which is formed from eye contact, skin contact, breastfeeding, stay at home mothering, parenting gone right, attunement, proper attachment, non existent, not only non existent, but worse, horrifically right. torturous, abusive. It's a miracle that right. you can think and talk and, and, and put together sentences. Right. And, and it's a miracle that you're, you're here and, and functioning. So that speaks to the light in us. There's a light behind all the darkness. So we're going to clear away all of the darkness or obviously as much as we can yeah. so that we can expose yeah. the light and heal through these injuries so that they are not sitting in your sy system and carrying okay. on and on generationally. So if you would be so kind as to share with us your your panel two reactions to the wounds as we shrunk it last last time, last week. Okay. I, I first want to say that I'm remembering, I think my father left us alone because I've experienced this with my own children. I think he did it to save our lives, thinking he was helping us, because I used to get on my knees and pray when I knew that my mother was about to commit homicide on my children. And then years later, she actually confessed to me she was going to kill her husband, my sister, her children, and she didn't tell me my children, but I already knew that. And mm -hmm. because I was a praying person, I would foresee it, and I would combat that in prayer and fasting and on my knees, but it was scary. So I think my father was trying to protect us the same because I backed out a lot so that when I was away in Tennessee so that my mother would not hurt my children. So and how, when she so... confessed that, that was horrible. It confirmed uh, that's, that's what I knew. Pretty that that's pretty up up there highest level of abuse. Now, how how did your father think about protecting you by staying away? I'm not clear on that. Just observing us from like he when we were moved to California, he would drive down the freeway. He always seemed to know what we were doing, mm -hmm. but he would not make contact. And I'm realizing it was a form of protection. But then he gave up. Okay, so he Give hovered up. around to to check in, and um, you, you know, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to help you connect the dots to the multi generational okay. transmission process, like Dr. Marie Bowen okay. has defined, which is pathology from generation to generation. So, what what was going on with your mother? What were her panel one wounds? Ooh. Well, my grandfather sexually molest them all she lied about it um her four three or three or four sisters i can't remember right now um her brother and she was made to beat them and uh, she had to beat them severely so she was and trained to torture experiences there as well mm -hmm. she was yeah. trained to torture wow okay yes mm -hmm. and wh yes. what about and your she actually liked it i i I started talking to her some time back. I've cut her loose again, but she actually started telling the truth about her father did penetrate her. There was full sexual intercourse there, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I could actually see the look on her face of pleasure when she talked about beating her siblings. She okay. did it to win her father's attention, and the worse she beat them, the better he loved her, and she would be his favorite, you know, not molest the other children. She would be the one that he would go to. So speaking really of really sad to see that. Speaking of grooming your child, right? Grooming your child right. for inflicting abuse on other people. First you abuse the child and then you re reinforce the abusive behavior in the child and so that child becomes right. the aggressor. Okay, so Right. Um and what about your father? What what were some of his panel one wounds that drew drew him to your mother. His mother hated him. 
um, okay. would throw him out on the street. Mm-hmm. He said she was as evil as a B-I-T-C-H could be, that okay. she was really into darkness. He didn't mess with her because of that. Mm-hmm. But he said she was no kind of effing mother, that he went through a lot of abuse. Okay, so she hated him, him, was abusive. Yes. She had a lot of darkness. So can you connect the dots yes. between his choice for his wife, right? Oh, Absolutely. And his mother. Absolutely. Right. And who his mother is or was. Blueprint. I talk a lot about the blueprint. So we've got the blueprint of the mother. You've got the blueprint of the father. Now you've got your mother, your mother and your father. I'm talking about the grandparents, that blueprint, and then the blueprint of your parents. And now it trickles down to you. And let's track the chaos. And so what is this chaos? Okay. Chaos is a result of the the falling apart of your life as a result of your panel one and your panel two. And if you can repeat again your panel two reactions and your panel three core belief, and then we'll go right into chaos defenses and breakdowns. Okay, let me go back in my notes. My yeah, panel take, two, which one is that? Panel um, two reaction. is okay. the reactions to the wounds. So here you are being tortured and molested and neglected and all of the above. And what do you think your baby self, what do you think the reaction was within your baby self? Well, it wasn't safe to be me. And the women, all the women in the family hated me. So I spent a lot of time alone. I was afraid of everyone. They would pinch me and do things to my little body. So okay. I never felt safe. Okay. And being around them meant pain. All right. So your reaction was reactions of pain and recoiling. And we're talking more primitive than the little girl. We're talking the first few months and years of life when the baby subjected to this kind of torture will start to dissociate. So I bet you that you right. started the dissociative process really early on because with good reason, you did not want to be in your body. And I would be surprised if you numbed yourself out to the pain. Is that so? I did. Okay. And I would go hide in a little cabinet in the kitchen to hide away from everyone. I was always told I played there, but I know I wasn't playing there because I heard my mother's molester boyfriend speaking of murder, murdering someone and I blocked that out. So this is and the... I, I, my grandfather killed somebody and I was there and then they sported the blood like a slaughtered animal. You know, and this... I saw that and he, he got away with it. You know, this is beyond, beyond, beyond. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. I know. It's awful. It's awful. Okay. And, and so, you know, know what? So... I learned not to breathe. And be quiet, you know, to hide and not even breathe. Don't be seen. You know what's so interesting is I listen to you. You're, you've seen so much of it, and I know the audience is hearing this and probably in shock by what they're at. Shock and disbelief. It's hard to believe these things. These things really, really happen. They really happen. They and, do. And, and so after a while, it becomes almost familiar and familial and so it's like uh okay so he murdered her and then the blood got squirted and passed the butter and that that's how crazy uh the system is that it it almost normalizes these kinds of rituals and it, it normalizes the abuse did you almost feel like this was a a I mean, you must have known somewhere this is not normal. This is not okay. But did it seem just like on some level, like this is just everyday stuff? That's what it was. It, yeah, it was everyday stuff. And we were yeah. not allowed to respond to it. If yeah. we cried, we were beaten. We were told to shut the F up. Right. And you better not cry and, and you know, just and beaten. Okay. You better not tell anyone. Better you not. Better not smile. So I'm I'm imagining mm-hmm. your baby self of panel two started curling up in a ball, dissociating and shutting down. And then in panel three, which oh, is yeah. part of me? I said, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Okay. And then in panel three, 
I'm sure you encoded something nasty in there about yourself, making it to mean that it was your fault, making it to mean that there was something defective in you as to why this was happening. Alice Miller talks about the child who would rather be in a good world and be the bad child because it would be horrible to think that your parents are bad. So you protect yourself by thinking, well, I'm the bad one, and if I behave properly, I'll have control over it. That will never happen, of course. But what did you encode in there that that defined you? Well, that I didn't deserve food, remember that? And I the do. animals were more important than me. Yes. That good people die, that's what I remember, that loving good people are murdered. They don't live, um, so you have to hide. And then... Uh, I just drew a blank. I've been fogging out, like you said, would happen. Yeah, it's okay. Uh, oh, I'll... and that, I, that I'm not allowed to have good friends, that if I have good people in my life, they will be murdered. They will die. So the that world... I'm not good enough to have good I'm friends. I'm not good enough to... To have I'm not... would mean death. Exactly. I'm not good enough. I don't deserve to eat. I don't deserve to have good friends. If I'm good, the light of the goodness of me will be taken away because good people die. Do you see the right. encoding? Can right. you can you see the messaging? Oh, yes. Yeah, pretty obvious. So now, yeah. as a result of panels one, two, and three, we have breakdown. So let's track your life. Let's right. track the breakdowns. Okay. Breakdowns financially. Breakdowns maritally. Breakdowns oh. in, in, in emotionally. Breakdowns health-wise in every in every way possible. Breakdowns. Right. Yeah. I'm 50 pounds overweight. Okay. I'm dying. I know that I have cancer in several places in my body. Um, and I don't need a doctor to tell me because I'm not able to heal myself at this point. And mm -hmm. when I tried to go, the appointments weren't set. So I don't think I'm supposed to know because I will give up. Mm -hmm. I've just been through too much. Okay. Um, I have severe insomnia, mm -hmm. sleep apnea. Mm -hmm. I have spinal damage, which causes a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. I have TMJ, which is a lot of pain. I don't breathe normal. I forget to breathe. It's more common for me not to breathe mm -hmm. than it is to breathe, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I've dated men that have beaten me horribly. I've attracted people that have mocked me and wouldn't help me. Yeah. I'm poor. Yeah. I'm disabled. It goes on and on. It's endless. I'm so I sorry. I very yes. female and perverted men, people that just want to use me for my light because they get something out of it. Mm -hmm. But when they realize they're not going to profit or get the attention they want, then they show their psycho side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. My brain was erased. I forgot how to talk and spell when I had got put on some medicine and remembered the satanic flashbacks. Mm -hmm. So I felt really stupid. I was forced into two marriages that they were very bad people. Mm -hmm. um, I was forced into having a second child. And I had to sign over my child to keep that man from blowing my head off. Even though I was with my son every day, um, it's just, it's endless. It's, it's endless. endless. I, it's I've endless. got like 20 pages here and I quit writing because it's too much. Okay. It's just every day was hell. Every, every day, day was hell. And I'm 48 years old and I still live in prison. And yes. it sucks. Yes. So your, your my body. My children have called me crazy. What have they called you? My children hated me. My children hated me for 20 years and called me crazy. When my son came back, I had to let him go because my mom started coming back, and I don't want her. Well, I you, can't have her. Her phone call, the ringing just makes me sick. Of course. My body just wants to die. <laughs> of course. And he doesn't understand that. Yeah. And what I had is... to let him go. Mm -hmm. I waited 20 years. <laughs> And he finally came back, and he loved me, and I had to let him go. Mm. I thought it saved my life. Mm. I've been stalked. I've been harassed. People have seen me suffering, but because I wouldn't have sex with them, they just watched me suffer further. 
I've gone without food in my life. Mm-hmm. Didn't have a vehicle for a long time. Mm-hmm. And I've just had men that just continue to break me down. And people that don't like the light in me, they're drawn to it and attracted to it. But then they hate everything about me. And I'm playful and I'm silly. And they don't like that. So you, never really sad or depressed. So you mentioned so many like symptoms. <laughs> yeah, so many symptoms. Mm-hmm. And everything from the peeing in your pants to the dissociation to um, the... The, the lack of memory to every every single symptom possible. So, again, our bodies, our minds, our souls are, are crying to be understood. There's nothing better than being heard and understood. And, unfortunately, you had no enlightened witness to this. And... That's another reason no. we, we go crazy because there's nobody there to sit by us and say, wow, that was really sick. Let, let's get out of here. Or right. I've got your back or somebody like that. You didn't have that. Maybe right. your father tried, but I, I don't think he quite did it. He didn't protect you at the he end failed. of the day. He failed. He failed. Yeah. He should have just taken and taken us. Yeah. But I don't know if we'd have been much better off with him. And 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 I just want to I bring, wish we were orphans. Yeah, right? You would have had better step whatever mm-hmm. foster parents or yeah. however. Now, I'm wondering and please mm-hmm. help the audience understand cuz I'm certainly asking in my mind, mm-hmm. how come child protective services didn't come into play? How come law enforcement didn't come into play? Did you not have to go to school? Did, were there not bruises all over? Aren't your teachers mandated child abuse uh, reporters? My Well, I've had teachers that have been very cruel to me because of who my sister is or because maybe I outshine their daughters not trying to. Um, I've had jealous women all around me. When I told the truth, I was accused of lying. People were afraid of my mom because she was crazy. You know, my grandfather was a social worker and murdered someone, and he got away with it. So My mother got away with stuff. So what about the bruises on your body? What about that? Didn't anybody see it? Didn't anybody report it? How come there wasn't more protection against all the chaos? Well, people thought we were trash because my sister turned awkward. She used to be a very cute little girl, but I think she turned awkward in self-defense to be left alone from molesters. Um, They didn't like her because of the way that she looked. And then me, because I was such a pretty little girl, I had a lot of hatred from grown females that behaved like my mother. And people that did care for me, like some teachers, they didn't get involved. And yeah, we had pinch marks and bruises all the time, you know, um, but we were the scum. We moved to a town where everybody knew everybody and we were not welcomed. We were the scum. We didn't have a father, mm-hmm. you know, um, mm-hmm. my mom, they called her a whore. And then when my aunt moved there, my aunt was really a whore and a bad person. Mm-hmm. We just were not the elite in society. And so we were ignored. And when we were tortured, people thrived on it. And then when my sister became sexually, you know, promiscuous, then, you know, the women acted like I was that. I was always judged very cruelly, and I didn't Mm -hmm. do those things. But I wore the shame that my mother and my sister behaved in. Uh, And of course... because of my calling in life... Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, for those of you who haven't seen the episode on sibling rivalry and family systems gone wrong and what happens to siblings, it's always the parents that are the cause and their parents that are the cause and their parents that are the cause. And I don't say fault because, again, it's a system gone wrong starting way back when. And so the fact that your sister was so dysfunctional and she was a whore it was obviously an out an outgrowth of the the horrible horrific system that she was in right. that you were in you guys played different roles right. so there was a lot of chaos including probably sibling rivalry yes no oh goodness 
Mm. Yeah, my sister had me raped. She was going to split my throat one time, too, at the sink. She came up with a glove on and a knife to my throat. But she didn't kill me because I saw her. So that boys raped me and tried to lock me in rooms. She's done awful things. So so tell me about the rituals. People want to know what what is meant. Okay, so there's a lot of he killed her, she tried to kill you. So right. uh, so what what's yeah. the ritual demonic satanic part of it? What what does that what does what kind of chaos does that look like? Well, um like I said, I was supposed to be a high priestess. From the time I was a little girl, my power was known. It was supposed to be used to expose people because I can see through people. People can't have secrets from me. And I think I'm trusted with this because I don't use it against people. But I was supposed to help people see these things, to use them to bilk them of their finances to control them and so within this system if you have that position people are not going to like you to begin with they will follow you because they have to but it's always fighting and competition somebody always trying to take you out to take your place and it attracts jealousy from every age if a newborn comes in with that call on their life 80-year-old women will hate that child. So kind of like vampiring, va vampiring your energy. Yes. And, and what way yes. we say ritualistic, yeah. ritualistic, what's the ritual? You know, I think of ritualistic abuse. I guess I get images in my mind of black robes and mm -hmm. long fingernails and yes. blood, uh, you yes, know, files of things. blood and, yes. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was murdering of animals, murdering of children. Um, I My mother spoke of a child for years until a couple years ago um, about we had a sister. And I'd like to know where the hell did this sister go? Because for all that time, she talked about it and how she lost the child. And then one day I asked her about my sister and like, oh, what are you talking about? I never had a child. I was like, what? So but a lot of we denial. We were tied down on altars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we were tied down on altars, cement blocks. My mother was going to kill me as a newborn in a ritual, and I remember it. And I don't like to talk about it because it was a supernatural intervention. Um, my sister used to reach her little hand over to me and tell me, it's going to be okay, Rocky, I'll save you. But then she grew to hate me. Um, so, audience, if they, you're they listening, they, yeah, you, as you're, it's, it's almost so unreal it's almost so um so beyond beyond it's crazy like a horror movie. pardon me it's like a horror movie like a horror movie it's only on the screen one one yeah. of the uh the people there was a movie Mm -hmm. Oh, go ahead. No, just one of the people in the chat room. And, and of course, if you're not com comfortable, if you feel that at any point you're endangering yourself by revealing anything, please don't. Um, one of the uh, chat oh, room. I don't. Okay. Okay. So one person wanted to know, what cult were you in? Was there a particular Well, I want to say this type? because mm -hmm. I've known people in life that are Satanists. They're simply rebelling against Christianity. They were nice people. They didn't sacrifice children or animals. They were very loving. I've known witches. There are witches out there that worship the earth. Um, mm -hmm. They don't sacrifice people and kill children. My family's like everything. Satanist, witchcraft, voodoo, like you name it. They've okay. taken many forms. Okay. It's wherever they find their power. Okay. So it wasn't the group of witches. It wasn't that. It was some other kind of cult. I mean, is it a particular cult that was or more general than that no people just, people just get involved in wherever they find their power and okay. it's competition within the family like you see churches pop up everywhere people always want to be the leader they don't want to be the followers satanism is just like that they'll go off branch off and build their own thing come mm -hmm. up with their own stuff it's all bottom line they're working with dark spirits to destroy people it's okay. all about control and uh, torture. And power. To gain that power. And whoever yes. does the worst things, mm -hmm. murdering animals and children are the most powerful things you can do. And so they're always trying to get up on each other. Everybody always wants to be the leader. Nobody wants to be the follower. But they will. 
because they have to be a part of that society. So, so it's whatever they choose to do, whatever, you know. And Whatever it's organized. They to follow. And it's organized. And so I want to move into panel five, defenses. Yes. Okay. And okay. so obviously we talked about your dissociative um, episodes. What yes. other defenses? Um, what I mean by defenses are best attempts to avoid the pain. Uh, people have defenses okay. like uh, using drugs, um, gambling, shopping porn, on okay. and on and on and on. So what what do you see as your defenses that you use to try to protect yourself? Well, as a child, I remember always spending time with God. I got mocked for that. I spent a lot of time alone, mm -hmm. and, you know, they'd come up and say, what were you doing? And it was so natural for me, talking to God, mm -hmm. talking to God, you know, because that's what I was doing. So that would be I your was, healthy defense. Connected. Yes, that would be your health, and probably why you're here is because you connected to the light, and that was your way of surviving. And so that's your healthy defense. What about any other defenses that you use to try to numb the pain or um, anything that you could could identify, even after listening to the mind map video series and. And, and seeing examples of defenses, what do you think? Were there any other defenses that you use to protect yourself? Yeah, I was always dating people that I had no interest in that okay. would beat me. Okay. It was protection. I would go from one relationship and somebody would infiltrate my life at a place of vulnerability, and they knew that. And I had to allow that person in my life so the guy before him wouldn't kill me. Ah, okay, so now we're talking... Right. Panel five, your defenses and also your permeable and non-permeable. So when we're non-permeable, we don't let people in. When we're too permeable, we let in the wrong people. So I think that you have to... I would that too. Right. You have to let the I people in. Trusting. Say that again. Yeah, I was too trusting. I Too trusting. I was, I was too trusting. I easily let people in because as a child, I was forced and told who I had to play with, and I was given to a boy at 12 years old, not allowed to play with my Barbie dolls anymore or my baby dolls, and he raped me for two years and beat me. I experienced domestic violence at age 12. So this is so complex. So I would go off to places by myself. Go ahead. Complex uh, trauma, complex uh, CPTSD, as, as, as it's called, complex post-traumatic stress disorder, do you get flashbacks? Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I get beat up in my sleep. I live the stuff over and over in the loss of my children. Okay. I became timid and shy. I was no longer free to dance and sing. Mm -hmm. um, I got. I felt like I just didn't care anymore. And people would say, my mom would always say, you have to say you don't care. Like, I got to a point where being abused was normal, and I just didn't care anymore. I wasn't going to put any emotion into it. Right. And so this is that time I, when... I ignored cheating boyfriends. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so one of your defenses was really erecting a wall around your emotions and associating connection uh, with any human being as extreme pain, violation and uh, uh, torture. So it's it makes sense that you would c cauterize your feelings, numb out your feelings, and protect and wall them up. So those were some of your defenses. And so we, we're, we are going to move just so that people can understand the mind map process. And really the purpose of the mind map process is to clean out the wounds of childhood so that we can have a chance to get psychological free, psychologically free from this horrific double dungeon of darkness, as I call it, in your case, very appropriately put. And so what we're going to do next is, is, is hold your family of origin accountable for the damages. So we're going to start... 
by making a damage list. And for those of you who think that this is a little mm -hmm. wacky, I've been doing it for years. And what what is very powerful about this exercise is that it's really important that people have a chance to express the repressed anger. So we're not going to get into it too much. I know that you're working with Yitz, our wonderful life coach, correct? Yes. Oh, yeah, and I am a patient. You said that before, and then you said, no, I was a volunteer. No, I'm a patient. Oh, I, am, I, I, I paid for my session. <laughs> okay. So so our, our wonderful life coach is helping you go through this mind map education. And so, yes, there is a process whereby you carefully go through through your pain of what was done to you. And so if you can do a damage right. list, okay, we're going to start in on the damage list of mother and father. If you can just illuminate some of the damages from, from mom to you. Okay. So that was the, because of you, mom, right? Yes. Or the because of you, dad. Yes. So this okay. is the, the purpose. I can't say a lot to my dad. Yeah, okay. Yeah, because I watched your videos over and over. I told you I ate them day and night and in mm -hmm. bed. <laughs> Just played them all day long. Okay, okay. So remember, the purpose of this exercise, this process, is to identify the shadows, the wounds that were inflicted on you, and make it really, really clear that this was not your fault, that you're okay. not crazy, that you right. were made crazy, right. and that your parents, too, were subjected to this, and they were made sick and crazy. This is multi-generational. This is right. not a blame-shame system. This is a system of tracking and connecting the dots so that you can really see quite clearly who done it, what happened, and why you're sick. So l let's go with, right. it's pretty obvious. How did your mother damage you? <laughs> right. Well, I have spinal damage. I have face damage. I Because of you, Mom, I'm poor. I'm not able to take care of myself and work. Because of you, I've been raped and beaten by men. Because of you, I lost my children. I have, I've had no life. I've been a prisoner all my life. Because of you, my sister hated me. Because of you, I couldn't tell the truth to help my sister and get her the help she needed. Because of you, I was a slave. And I had no voice. And I've had to find my voice because mm -hmm. of you people abused me and used me mm -hmm. because of you. I never thought that I deserved anyone good in my life because I was trying to protect them from you guys killing them because of you. I have anxiety and I've suffered depression because of you. I've walked this earth alone and I've never found my rightful place. Because of you, I've been seen as a walking vagina. That kind of spirit is on me. And that's what people see me as. They either want to use me sexually or they're jealous. And people don't see me outside the perversion. Because of you, I've been sexually exploited. Because of you, I can't sleep in the bed at night. And find rest and peace. It's a place of pain. And because of you trying to kill me, I never felt that I was valuable. Because of you, I have eating disorders. And I feel like it's the only thing I can control, but it's really out of control. Because of you, I have the memories going through my mind day and night that I am constantly having to create and gather more things to create with because I don't really know how to just be still. Because of you, my sister lives in a mental hospital and I can't have a relationship with her because she's dangerous to me. 
because of you, I fled to Tennessee, and I went into hiding for 13 years. And when I reached out to you, you were still cruel. Because of you, my children have traveled down a path that is not their own. And because of you, I don't know if they're going to be okay. Because of you accusing me of child abuse, forcing my son to do that. I can't adopt children. I can't take care of the elderly. And these are things that I should do to support myself. Because of you, I don't know if I'm ever going to be free and have my own place. Because of you, I killed myself. I took 234 sleeping pills with hard liquor because I needed you out of my life again. And you drove me so crazy. And the guy that was abusing me, I didn't think I'd ever get away. And so I killed myself and I was forced back. That was because of I let you back into my life. Because of you, my beautiful son Chase was never safe to bond with me. Because of you, I can't see that great right now. My vision is damaged, and I have brain damage. And because of you, I forgot how to spell and add. And because of you, people blamed me and told me I had a victim mentality. And because of you, I've spent all of these years in therapy, and I've done everything that I can. And because of you, I've had to find my way back the powerful child that I once was and I didn't need all this stuff to be loving and kind and pure I was that before you damaged me because of you I attract psychotic friends and people in my life because of you the feral cats are still a problem in my life and it's triggered me for seven years and I'm still not free from it I'm abused over cats because you did that to me and the cycle never stopped so here, here's what because we're going to do. Because you, I was without a car. <laughs> what did you say? I think I'm done. You because know, I, I, I've been I, without a car. I know you're not done, and I know that there's so much. No. I know there's so much, yeah. and and we, we we will privately continue to process it, okay? And then the yeah. same with your dad. Yeah. You have a because of you will continue next time right. with your father. And okay. finish this process of, in some way, a, 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 a psychological cleansing, if you will, a letting out of the repressed yes. feelings. And I just want to check in with you be, before you get off the um, the, the show. Yeah. How are you? Are you okay? I'm good. I'm good. I didn't think I was going to cry. I'm good. I needed to do this. Yes, you I'm needed good. to. Yes, you needed to do this. And when we don't express ourselves and we repress our emotions, we get sick. And our symptoms are, again, yes. cues and clues that let us know that something's really not okay. Really not okay. And right. so um, I'll be interested to know how you're doing after this processing. And we're going we're gonna to pick it up next week. I don't want to do too much yeah. more because I can hear how hard this is and how sad this is. Yeah. And I don't want you to be overwhelmed. And so I want you to just take care yeah. of yourself after, after we get off the phone. I just want you to take good care of yourself. Maybe drink some water, tea, uh, relax, yeah. you know, anything. Go lay down. Yeah, go lay down. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. And, and I just want you to know how much I appreciate you being this vulnerable. And I know how hard you're working. I know why you're doing this. And that is to get all the poison out of you. And it's appropriate yeah. that you try everything in your human power <laughs> to try to heal yourself right okay, right and so i i'm just honored right. to be a part yeah. of this process uh, because it's it's very hard Thank for you. people like yourself to trust anyone let alone go on public uh radio right and talk about it 
And right. so, wow, wow right. to you, okay? Congratulations yeah. to you for you. being so honest and courageous and forthright. And, and this is not just, uh, you know, for, for, for your own release. It's really for you to release oh, no. the years and years of torture, uh, a torturous poison that's right. sitting in your system. And so we're now at a place in the mind map of from through. We've gone through it. We have a little bit more work to do next time next week we're going to process your father so put together a because of you list okay. for your father reminding the audience that this is okay. not a blame your parents model it's a way for us to really let out the poison of the damage of the multi-generational uh, process i wish your parents would have had a way to release their poisons right. and their parents and their parents and their parents and the the process stops with right. you, and as you heal, then you bring more yeah. healing to yourself and the people around you, and you stop with allowing right. people to vampire you and torture you. Okay, so we're taking down an old system. Yeah. We're taking down your core belief that you're worthless, that you're garbage, that you're walking vagina, as you said. We're taking all of that, yeah. that those lies down. Okay, those yay. lies, yay, yay, the <laughs> lies have to die. That's what has to happen. And, yeah. the, and you've said the truth. And as Martin Luther King said, the truth will set us free. And I believe in that. And I think that a big part of the mind map system is telling the truth and letting that truth right. lock, unlock us from our psychological prison. So just... Can I add to that, Dr. Judy? Yeah, please do. The truth that we practice, the truth that we receive and practice will set us free. The truth that we receive and practice. I love that because it's the pay it forward yeah. philosophy. Beautifully said. And the more healed you are, the more yeah, you'll... We can hear truth. What's that? We can hear truth, but if we don't... We can hear truth. Yes. And I've known people like this, but if we don't practice it, it does no good. We can reject it. It's putting it into actions. So that's the most important thing. Yeah. In, ingest it, digest it, and then manifest it. Manifest it within yourself and manifest yeah. it by helping other people. So please join yeah. in next week. We're going to continue this. And I'm going to start in with the song yeah. that I selected. You could stay on. And um, we will be Yay. back. <laughs> it's it's a it's a good one. It's called <laughs> "Sympathy for the Devil" by the Rolling Stones. Do you like the pick here? Oh. Yeah, and the the so, my song picker Heather, uh, wonderful Heather, picked this. Hi Heather. Yes, she picked this. So I'll just go go into it. I know we don't have a lot of time. I'll continue the song next time. Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones. Please allow me to introduce myself. I'm a man of wealth and taste. I've been around for a long, long year, stole many a man's soul and faith. And I was around when Jesus Christ had his moment of doubt and pain, made damn sure that Pilate washed his hands and sealed his fate. Pleased to meet you. Hope you guess my name. But what's puzzling you is the nature of my game. I stuck around St. Petersburg when I saw it was the time for a change. Killed the Tsar and his ministers. Anastasia screamed in vain. I rode a tank, held a general's rank when the Blitzkrieg raged and the body stank. Pleased to meet you. Hope you guess my name. Oh, yeah. Ah, what's puzzling you? It's the nature of my game. I watched with glee while your kings and queens fought for 10 decades for the gods they made i shouted out so do you want to guess his name wait do you want to guess his name oh me yeah it's the devil Satan, yeah yeah <laughs> yep 
Yeah, Lucifer yeah. sounds like Lucifer, the devil, Satan. Oh, yeah, that's another one. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to continue with this process. And so next week, please come back, tune in, and remember that if you register I early for the mind map uh, video seminar, you get three hundred dollars off. Call us; we'll explain more. We'll send you information. And if you want to get the mind map video series, you can do so. You can go to Dr. Judy W T F and uh, find it on the website. And uh, for those of you listening in, I really appreciate you tuning in. And we'll have time for questions hopefully next time. And we will be covering panels 7, 8, 9, and finishing up panel 6, the damage list that your father inflicted on you. So thank you so much for sharing, okay. Raquel. It'll be short. Pardon me? Thank you so much. You're very welcome. It. It'll be short. <laughs> It'll be short. Yes, Thank it was you. much longer for your mother. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Good night, everybody, and thank you, Raquel. Okay, good night. Take care. <laughs>